everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopar.com. We're going to come back with a Summit Tool slash Parts Haul. I've done these way back in the past, I haven't really ever, I think, officially designated them as such, but I got some stuff here I thought some people might be interested in, some things I've never actually had or used myself, so I figured we'd take, a, uh, take the time to document it, take a look at it. And see how the camera does, as I'm still constantly trying to improve that. I threw down the white backdrop a couple of videos ago when I took a look at the uh, some new Klein cutters I got in. And I thought it had done really good based on what I had here. And then I sort of looked at that those uh, video clips on the computer. And I sort of had the same problem. So uh, I don't quite know what the issue is. But again, uh, the, more, the more I work at it, the better we'll get. So once again... All this stuff came from someone that's just a smorgasbord of miscellaneous parts uh, with one, one common goal. Uh, we'll get started here, just some uh, Deco 532nd ID 6 foot vacuum line. Uh, that is actually going to be used in conjunction uh, with a Dorman brake bleeder kit. And what I'm going to be doing with this is actually threading it in place. I'm uh, going to be changing the uh, fluid on the Mopar tin here pretty soon, the antifreeze I should say. And in order to bleed it, uh, this seems like a pretty good idea to me. I've never actually tried it before, but in theory, I think it will work. <laughs> and the vacuum line, of course, will allow me to capture anything without making a mess. And no clue if it's going to pan out like I envisioned it in my head, but I believe that it might. And I will keep you posted on that. Uh, speaking of that, this is a disappointment. Um, I don't think either one of those are really worth spending the time on. This one is... Does anyone know what that is? You probably don't. And if you're like me and you ordered it, it's certainly not what you were expecting. So once upon a time when you ordered a thermostat gasket, you got a thermostat gasket. It sort of went between the thermostat and the water neck, right? Well, this little sucker here, it's CGT C5198. It cost all of $3.01. And the problem is, it is literally, as you can see there, it's for a 5.7, 6.1 liter Hemi, late model Mopar stuff. If you think, oh man, you know, they just must have given you the wrong part. No, it, this, when you order it, there's no picture. If there was a picture on the website, I wouldn't have ordered this because I wanted, I don't even know what they would call it because there's no factory service manual I have access to. And in the past, every vehicle I've owned... Uh, 69, 74, 2001, everything I've done for friends, a thermostat gasket is a thermostat gasket. This is a literal gasket for the thermostat. So I could see how this could be called a thermostat gasket, but I think I've got some, yeah, right here. Look, I've got a lot of, you know, 440 and small block Chrysler thermostat gaskets, and this is what you get. It's more for the water neck, yes, but that's the common name, <laughs> and... Here we are, it's a gasket for the thermostat. So, I don't know, I've never actually had that thing apart. I'm gonna do that and kinda see. Maybe there's not a water net gasket, I don't know. Um, it seems like they might do a thing where they have a really long water neck. I'm not sure what they're doing on the block side. We will just take it apart, figure it out, and probably have to go chasing parts. So that's, that's something to not look forward to. But if you're ever in the position I was and you're wanting a thermostat gasket for a late model Hemi, Make sure that you get an accurate picture. And a lot of times when you buy a thermostat gasket, they just use a small block Chevy placeholder image. This had no picture, and I can't caution you enough, if you're in the same boat, make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Uh, this might be a case where it's better to actually go local, provided they would have it in stock, which they probably wouldn't. Uh, this right here, I, <laughs> I'm a little concerned about, I'm not going to lie, a performance tool. Some of their stuff is garbage, some of it is actually pretty good, and when you consider the price that you paid for it, you, you come out on top. So, uh, their, I think overall parent companies like Weimar or something, so on Summit, you'd be looking at WMR W83205 three-piece line clamps. That, uh, that's what it is portrayed as here. I'm also kind of getting this video done just because I literally need to clean this bench off. I've got some other things coming. Uh, right there, though. Used to pinch off, I think you can read that, fuel, vacuum, transmission, brake heater, and other fluid lines safely and easily. Built-in locking mechanism, quickly shut off flow on most hose applications. Heat-resistant, reinforced nylon construction. Now, key thing with this three-piece set, small will cover eighth inch to five sixteenths, medium half to three-quarter, and large three-quarter to two and a half. So, uh, my thoughts on this is to be 
primarily use our heated hoses, but of course, over time, as we go, we're going to get more and more opportunities to make use of it. These are tools that, you know, online and in video form, they all roughly look the same, outside of like the super expensive ones. So my thoughts are, you know, hey, why not, why not uh, take advantage of that and get the cheap ones? <laughs> so, sometimes that works, sometimes it does not. Uh, it looks like you're never going to be able to get that off. I'm afraid we would break it. There's no D-link or anything at all. I can compress it a little bit, but there are tabs right there preventing that from coming off. So this is going to be our small one quarter to five sixteenths. And that's about as far as I can open it due to <laughs> the locking mechanism. So then we would clamp it down and I guess we just position that. It might be cumbersome and less convenient to have a removable and adjustable lock, but I can already see the benefits of that and I've not tried to even utilize these. So, not sure what that says for the tool, but again, uh, they all roughly look the same. So, if you're somebody that makes use of these and you've used Performance Tool and love it, or if you know that they're garbage and I should have invested in Brand X, please let me know, uh, not only for myself, but for others. <laughs> but, uh, the price on this, what did it set me back? Apologies for not telling you already. $8.99, so 9 bucks, $3 a clamp. Not a bad deal, especially if they work. Now, long term, anything along those lines, I just, I don't know, it's too early to comment on. And again, I've never used anything like this. I've always pulled hoses, tied them up with cable ties, actually bailing wire. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, maybe in uh, rural agricultural areas you're like me and you just use bailing wire for this stuff. But uh, I don't know, as I work on more of the late model stuff, I sort of try to take better care of it, I guess, you know, because it's more of a pain to service. <laughs> and we're going to see if those help us or hinder us. And I do note as I set them to the side, there seems to be slight variance in the colors, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, up next, let's go ahead and go with this bad boy now. For the longest time, I always thought this was Liesl. I think it's actually Lyle, and it's one of those names you always hear it pronounced both ways. There's so many aftermarket and uh, you know automotive side companies where if it's a name, if it's a last name, or just a company name in general, um, unless you deal straight with the source, you will hear it pronounced so many different ways. <laughs> and uh, We'll get with Lyle. I believe that would actually be correct, uh, but again, L-I-S-L-E. I've got some of their stuff one-off sockets and stuff you can usually find at your local parts stores. This though is part number 60900 and it set me back all of let's see 2699. So it's a it's a pretty expensive nozzle and I do think I could have made my own for far less than this, but the purpose of this is to back flush your heater core flush out you know pretty much anything really with your coolant system and what it has going for it that makes that more advantageous than just your standard good garden hose is going to be right here this is barbed kind of like you would see with a uh, you know fire hose type of a design it's nozzled uh, however you want to orient it uh, but it's adjustable pressure which I'm assuming that is done back here just with a handle adjustment it would be really neat if you could dial in a set PSI Again, I'm not interested in setting the world on fire when I flush a heater core. Uh, I would prefer a much lighter volume that just simply gets the job done. But it's industrial spray gun and stepped tip design for easy heater core flushing. The tip will fit half, five eighths, and three quarter hose fittings, which works for pretty much everything I've got. Uh, on the back side here, let me just go ahead and read that. Adjustable pressure industrial spray gun and stepped tip design for easy heater core flushing. Half 5 8 3 quarter fittings. Water pressure can be easily controlled with one hand by squeezing the handle of the heavy duty spray gun. Once again, I agree with that, but it's also a sort of, I don't know, I don't want to say misleading and deceptive, but deceptive kind of. You know, when you hear someone tout adjustable, I mean, every freaking spray nozzle is adjustable in the sense that you don't have to squeeze it all the way, right? You can apply X amount of force with your trigger hand, and you're going to receive reciprocal amounts of water on the flip side. This almost made it sound like you could dial in a set pressure, and that's clearly not the case. Or set a flow rate. This is That's a very vague way of describing what this is while making it seem like it would be far far more particularly when you consider twenty seven dollars now the issue with spray guns and one of the reasons i justified purchasing this they've gone downhill 
like, as a child, I remember we would get those, and when they leaked, you would replace an O-ring, and they routinely came with spare O-rings. Now, especially the plastic ones, they just suck. Uh, they don't necessarily leak from the nozzle side, but they'll leak from the faucet side. And it's a constant battle, and when you're washing a car, or, you know, in this case, flushing a heater core, you don't necessarily want the water dripping all over your engine when it's not intended. And that would be the issue you would run into with a standard fare, you know, Walmart, Target type of a pickup. So I'm hoping that where some of the excessively high price of this comes in is that it's leak-free. We'll find that out in the future. Um, but again, it is designed with a standard hose garden end. Uh, insulated. Handles insulated to protect your hand when hot water is used to flush the cooling system. So that is another perk. Uh, the instructions, just we're going to go overboard here and read that. Drain coolant and remove the heater hoses from the engine. Connect the heater core back flush tool to the water supply. Insert the tip of the back flush tool into one of the hoses. Place the end of the other hose into a bucket. Additional hoses can be used when more length is needed. Squeeze the tool handle to flush the core until the water comes out clean. For best results, flush thorough. Flush through the heater core in the opposite direction of the coolant flow. So, uh, we're not going to make a dedicated video on this, and if I could find a box cutter, which I can't, so we'll just use this guy. We'll go ahead and take a uh, quick look at him. If anyone has used this before, and you've had good luck with it, or you hate it, or you were happier with your uh, standard nozzle, let me know. The other thing I have never understood, uh, this was never explained to me by any of the old timers I hung out with, or uh, any mechanic friends of mine, it seems like everyone that flushes the cooling system or the heater core, uh, granted, you know, you could use distilled or deionized water, all that jazz, but when you're actually flushing, it seems like everyone I know just uses tap water. Now, granted, I realize you're not going to be sealing it in, it's going to drain right out, um, but the other thing I don't understand is how the average person, or even like most shops, <laughs> would have something that would pressurize the water so you could use this and have it heated. I just, I don't know, like, I mean, what? <laughs> it's almost like you would need an oven, and then mitts, and a container, you know, a thick plastic container or metal that's not gonna get burned through over time, uh, particularly if you're in a shop doing this frequently. I don't know, and I think that's why I genuinely just see everyone using tap water uh, when they do this, which is not what I would prefer to do, uh, but it's literally all I've ever seen. Now, I can say in hand, I'm not a not a left-handed person, but this feels pretty good. The grip itself. Now, this back here is sadly plastic, and it's relatively thin. Uh, it's looks, looking like this thing will put out some pressure based on that mechanism there. <laughs> but uh, the good news is it appears to be brass construction here, so it should be longer life cycle than we're... Uh, going to get with some stuff. We can cycle that back and forth to kind of maintain a constant, I believe is what that is for. Uh, right here, this does come off. Now, that's a big deal. And the reason I say that is, if I hated this or it was constantly leaking here, uh, to the point of annoying me, I now at least can salvage this and put it on the end of a hose, uh, on another thread-on handle that I have that doesn't leak here. Uh, so we do have that going for something like this you could procure uh, from a local supplier or Amazon but you're probably gonna spend like you know 10 to 15 bucks on it and then you gotta buy more stuff or pay freight and at the end of the day when you can get the gun for another 12 uh, it kinda seems like the way to go in my opinion Nope, there's that o-ring I reference <laughs> so hopefully this will uh, pay its dividends for me I do do personally believe that it looks good and it feels really nice, particularly this side. Again, if I did ever have a heated source of water that was pressurized, uh, I'd think my hand would be just fine, unless of course it leaks from somewhere, which if that's the case, we've got problems. Now, did this have an O-ring in it? Yes. So both sides have O-rings. Again, both sides will be standard, so you can easily replace this in a local hardware store, uh, Walmart and Target during garden seasons. Uh, but Industrial is all that is on there. It's a little, I would say, almost looks used. It's almost got like a streak of brown, sort of a rusty color. I don't know, maybe somebody... Then again, I don't think they would have resealed it that way, but I guess they sent it back to the factory, maybe. Maybe that would be the case. <laughs> so, uh, up next, let's go ahead and get these guys knocked out. I have personally never had a set of these, and that's quite hard to believe. <laughs> but uh, this is Lyle... 
37,370,000. Uh, AC and fuel line disconnect set 799 is the price. Again, not setting the world on fire. You can get some of these that are cheaper. You can get some that cost more. Uh, these, what I liked about them, they were one color coded and two, they actually included a storage rack. And I'm hoping the size is on the rack so we can reference it. But uh, these are just kind of like a pain in the pain in your butt if you don't have these. Uh, if you've ever tried to get a line off, you probably broke it, and then you learned real quick that you needed something as simple as this to get the job done. But this set in particularly is designed to disconnect the spring lock couplings on Ford and Chrysler AC. Also works on fuel line quick connect couplings found on GM, Ford, and Chrysler. Uh, 5 16 size to disconnect push lock connectors on Ford radiators and transmission lines. So it's sort of a uh, mix and match set, if you will. But right there, if we can kind of get it to focus. That's essentially what you do. You just slide this over the hose. As you can see, it's open on one end. Uh, nestle it in place, push and pull, and it's a quick disconnect. So it will be nice to finally have these freaking tools as cheap and cheesy as they are now what i like right here i don't know that the camera is going to show it and it's not an issue with focusing in this case it's just very very difficult to see it would have been nice if these were like uh, stenciled or a different paint or something but we have yellow is going to be five sixteenths blue will be three eighths red will be half green is going to be five eighths orange will be three quarter and the white will be seven eight so let's just go ahead and grab the red one here and again as you can see that's not a full circle it's actually going to be able to slide over the hose and you simply pull that in place twist it turn it and you're free or at least i believe that's how they work i'll definitely have a better feel for it once we've gotten used them they fit nice and snug on the holder they're not just loose leaf uh, so again there's yeah, you could easily hang this if you wanted to since that does pass through you could drill it You can have it laying flat on a bench whatever you need to do put it in a cart again These are cheap $7.99 for this six-piece set uh, But again, this is just something that makes your life significantly easier when working with annoying factory <laughs> disconnects Another item from Lyle right here. This is something I've never owned I have never in my life had a spill free funnel and that's Kind of interesting given how much I've messed around with cars over the years, but this one is part number 24680. It set me back $27.99, so it was the most expensive thing that I picked up. And essentially, if you can tell right here, you've got this tab. It's obviously kind of based around the concept you would be using this for your radiator or coolant overflow, uh, reservoir, what have you. Uh, in theory, it would work just fine with other fluids, but uh, you can basically fill this thing up and then once you get to a full point you can stop it and bring this back over empty it back into your jug or your mix whatever you're doing and uh, I'm kind of excited about that so uh, the advertisement here fits most cars pickups trucks and many farm tractors is going to include five radiator adapters to fit most models now typically when you see that you're going to cover gm ford most imports and possibly chrysler chrysler is always the dark horse that's left out so uh, we'll see if i get lucky factory radiator on the ram and the challenger charger and duster <laughs> uh, actually the charger currently is a factory radiator but uh i've got got a replacement so we'll see uh, straight extension and two 45 degree elbows for angled and hard to reach applications there you can kind of see with a different mix and the uh, adapters kind of in place and that's all there really is to see on that side now spinning this around once more you can see the part number two four six eight zero uh, that's not the camera that's just glare from the lights uh, saves time eliminates spills and mess this will also this is actually a recommended tool it's the equivalent if you will uh, for the OE spec tool for late model chargers and challengers, I guess any Hemi engine, if you will. Uh, and it's supposed to eliminate trapped air pockets, which of course will cause erratic cooling system uh, problems, controls the proper amount of coolant entering the system, enables unattended filling of the cooling. I don't know about that. Uh, eliminates squeaky belts caused by coolant overflow. That is kind of a big deal with serpentine stuff. If you've ever like run into a Jiffy Lube or a dealer, most dealers don't care. Uh, and they're messy or they're you know in a hurry because they make money based on what they get done not the quality of what they do type of a deal which is understandable but uh, when you leave there and you got that annoying squeak that you didn't have beforehand 
<laughs> you know, uh, it's probably something like that fluid on the build. Uh, it'll fit most domestic import cars and light trucks. So let's go ahead and uh, I think, yeah, I can tear it. I'm trying to get this video done as quickly as I can while still providing the, you know, basic idea of what we got, rough overview, all that jazz. So it's kind of interesting. They've got a tab there, I guess, for retail displays. But if you're a pegboard and cook person, I suppose you could work with it in that manner. Let's just get that done. All I want to do is open this and take a look at it with you. So. Uh, that is a lid, which is nice because one of the things I hate is when you have funnels, you typically leave them out on a wall, and then if you do that in an area like I do, which even if you try to keep the dust down, you can't because it's always windy, uh, it's just going to make your life a little bit easier uh, because, again, one of the things I personally hate is having dust and debris get into my clean funnel. So, uh, right here, this is the glory that is the inside of the funnel, and we can basically come in, we've got that metered, it's not going to flow anything, and it's going to flow. It's that simple of a concept, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, let's take a look at the adapters here. Will I regret opening these? Possibly. I don't really know. Uh, but we do have it's like some radiator cap style, some water neck style. Well, that could be Dinky Brand X type stuff, I don't know. Uh, looks like a thread-on cap <laughs> is even included. Uh, here are all of the elbows, so let's just go ahead and make the most ridiculous extension we possibly could. That would be about it. Uh, that's going to be the extent of what we can do. <laughs> but this side here has got the official instructions and more adapters. And again, if anyone has used these, if you swear by it, if you hate it, if you felt like you got scammed out of what would have probably been like a $5.99 funnel from Walmart or Harbor Freight, uh, feel free to let everybody know. But, uh, we got some O-rings included. Various different size adapters here. And uh, let's take a look at this and get a feel for what they, what they want us to know. Alright, en espanol and English, wonderful. So the set is going to include the funnel. And then they're going to call this yellow stick here the fluid stopper. Simple enough. Uh, we've got an extension, two 45 degree elbows. They're going to give us a large cap, medium cap, small cap, and threaded cap. Uh, and then the adapters, they just basically run through and call them different sizes as well. So that really doesn't tell us much, but it's one of those things. You just match up what you've got with what's there and see what happens. So that's exactly what I'll be doing. I'll see, I'll see how I like it. Again, it might be overkill. Uh, personally, doing things the old-fashioned way, I've never really had any issues. But uh, I suppose it will be nice to have all of this on hand. Uh, particularly, I mean, standing just here in the shop, you know, 40 plus years, you know of uh, coolant system technology so it is worth noting uh, right here I want to go ahead and feature these just because it's such a pain to find them locally and I don't know why uh, this is from Dorman this is part number 650-007 and if you can tell it's so exciting this was a pack of five half inch vacuum caps I've already opened it up, that's why there's only four. What am I doing with these half-inch vacuum caps? What craziness have I gotten myself into? Honestly, I use it on my catch can on the Challenger. Uh, I don't let anyone service my own vehicles aside from me, but I still have to go get them inspected. And for whatever reason, they make you pop the hood. And uh, then the, the kids monkey around in there, and they pulled off my cap, and were trying to figure out what the catch can was without asking me. And they lost it, and uh, subsequently I've been running around with a rag in it. <laughs> and nothing leaks unless some idiot flips the switch, which they did. And, uh, yeah, so now I've got caps back on it. That's a good feeling. Last but not least, I'm pretty excited to give this thing a go. I've been having to pull a lot of underbody plastics on the Challenger here recently. Uh, I've got the soft trim set, you know, a little five-piece deal. I think mine came from Harbor Freight. Uh, really good quality on those, actually, and it's uh, quite a better value than the name brands you could pick up. Uh, but this is from OEM. Now, which they make some pretty good stuff, I have to say, at least in what I've experienced. And the part number, where is it going to be? Uh, OES on Summit 25313. This is a door panel remover. This one is only $4.99, uh, which is kind of hard to believe. It looks 
very nice quality, at least in the packaging. And again, for easy removal of door panel clips without damage. I'm kind of hoping that it will work wonders on the <laughs> push pins, you know. Uh, when people say, you know, door panel clips, I think of the old school stuff like, you know, on the charger and the duster, just a metal spring tab type of a thing. Uh, they're clearly indicating push pins, which, you know, that's what I would have called it personally. Uh, worth noting, there is a lifetime warranty on the tool. Uh, I thought it had the weight there. I guess it is not. There's a security tab there, which I'm thinking a good chunk of this tool's cost is actually the cardboard on the packaging. Let's get all this out of here. Also of note, earlier today, uh, Viha and KC Tool mentioned uh, they've got a fishing lure that's uh, pretty cool. It's kind of ne next up in the home decor line, I guess we're taking it to the great outdoors. OEM Tools, again, there's our part number 25313. It's kind of like a black finish here, nothing fancy, but it is steel. It is nice. It feels like a very sturdy tool. Like if I was going to break it, we would be doing it right now. Uh, this is not... It's comfortable. I mean, for being a square handle, it is comfortable. It's not soft, obviously. It's sort of like a hard plastic, which is kind of soft compared to something metallic. Uh, but the gripe I would have if you're in a hot shop, you know, or in an interior where the fan or the swamp cooler doesn't hit you in the summertime, anytime your hands get sweaty and you've got this type of a handle, I always find that it slips a little bit. Granted, the good news with this, we're just working on clips, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal, but that would be one complaint. I think a way of improving this, maybe getting it up to the $10 mark, uh, just putting like a textured grip, you know, sort of like we have on these VHA pliers here. Uh, something like that, just a little friction on your hand, I think would be a nice deal. That's what I brought in from Summit. We got some stuff for the radiator. I also got antifreeze, which was the main reason. Uh, trying to find the five-year 100,000 pink slash orange you know, Geo 5 type factory stuff uh, for a Chrysler vehicle is a freaking nightmare. Nowhere local has it. That's actually why I bought all this from Summit. Uh, and I also, I was trying to get the vacuum caps at the same time I was hunting the antifreeze and no one had those either. And I was like, you know, just screw it. We're going to go online. But uh, I think it's MS9769. It's the five year 100,000. Newer Chrysler stuff is going to be the purple antifreeze. You know, it's the 10 year 100,000. Uh, this stuff I've got in the 2010, it's the Hope type stuff, you know, the pink and the orange, again, G05. I think the factory stuff is 9769. I can't find that anywhere locally. And I wanted to go with it just because, you know, I'm trying to, trying to keep that car factory <laughs> equipped for the time being. And I'm thinking after this life cycle, you know, the next couple, couple thousand miles or five years, if my coolant overflow looks like trash, if it tarnishes and gets that ugly yellow, I'm going to buy a replacement, and then we're going to go with a Moroso unit, have the aluminum one. It'll match my catch can, and I'll probably do the power steering reservoir at the same time. This little sucker here, we will see. We'll get to test it out pretty soon. Uh, the spill-free funnel I'm going to put to use probably this weekend, I would imagine, unless I get off work early one of these days. Uh, same thing with this guy. I'm going to be using it on the truck. Might actually put it in use on the Challenger. And... Nothing else too crazy. I'm, I'll eventually get around to using the quick disconnect stuff. <laughs> but uh, don't you love it when you look down at the camera and it stopped recording? 29.59 is a magic spot on this Canon SL2. But uh, that's pretty much all we got. We got the quick disconnect. We got the OEM door panel remover. Got our spill-free funnel, our nozzle. Uh, we got these from Performance Tool that I'm not going to lie. I don't have a lot of faith in. Uh, if you've used them and they suck, feel free to let me know. Uh, you should have done that ahead of time. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. Thermostat gasket, once again, super thrilled with that purchase. But uh, that's about it. Uh, I am curious, though, if any of you frequently or regularly service your own vehicles, if you're using hot water when you flush out your heater core and you're actually putting it through a nozzle, what are you doing to pressurize the water? That's sort of like a gray. I'm sure there's a there's probably a tool that's more expensive than I'd like to pay for that would do it. Might even heat the water. I'm sure someone actually makes that now that I think about it more. But uh, you know, for me, it's sort of like gravity. You know, I hold one hose up and point one down, and we dump distilled water in. Uh, is sort of the the way things would go. And using something like this, I would literally be one of those guys using tap water. And again, it would be flushed out immediately. And then what I would do once it had cleared out the heater core, I would then send 
you know, a half gallon or so of distilled water through just in hopes of getting out any mineral deposits we threw in. But that's one of those things I've never really understood. In all the videos you can ever watch on YouTube, you never see anyone uh, actually using, you know, hot <laughs> distilled water, not from, you know, uh, a standard city or well garden hose. So I don't know. That's one of those things. It's It should be simple, but it it's just, it eludes me. <laughs> so, uh, but once again, uh, again, I know people seem to like the tool hauls the best. Uh, part hauls, I'm sort of limiting my audience, obviously. If you've got the same vehicles or tasting vehicles, they would be great. Uh, but this is sort of generic stuff here. You know, it's not only going to work for my old Chrysler stuff on the late model Mopar side, but you could use it on Brand X. You know, if you're into imports, uh, you know, exotics, whatever it might be. This is all sort of of the universal line, I felt. So uh, we went ahead and uh, covered it here for you. But I will leave it at that. As always, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you want any feedback on any of this stuff once I've used it, I'll be able to tell you if it was great and worth the money or if it sucks and I wish I wouldn't have bought it. Uh, if you already know the answers to those things, let me know. Um, reviews on the spill-free funnel seem to be pretty solid. I can say that. So... Um, but I believe that's all she wrote. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that said, I will catch you back here for more action from the shop.